Moin and guten Tag, I'm super excited because today I'm going to be baking a nice whole wheat bread. The dough itself has around 110% hydration, so it's a very, very sticky dough. It's more of an experiment. I just wanted to see what's possible and that's what this video is about. It's the first time I'm baking a bread like this and I'll be showing you my first three iterations today. So yeah, in this video you can watch me fail or succeed, you decide. But first, let's go to my nearby farmer and let's go shopping for some flour. This is where I like to go shopping for flour. It's my local farmer and um, this is the kind of wheat that I want to bake with. The only problem is that it doesn't really say <laughs> exactly the details, but it's a very organic, nice flour. Uh, so yeah. Let's try and test this out. It's going to be a little bit of a surprise. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, you pay by just tossing in your, your money right in here. I tested how much water this flour can absorb and it's around 80%. If you're unsure, I'm just going to be linking another video here which shows you how you can test that. I'll not show you exactly how I did my first two iterations, just the final results. And then I'll be showing you the full process of my third, my best iteration. Now my first version, attempt number one, definitely way too, <laughs> too flat, very much over fermented. So I paid closer attention to the fermentation process because there's definitely room to upgrade. <laughs> now this spread, well, you can use it as a frisbee to throw, <laughs> but what's actually quite good is um, you can take it and you can slice it and make some nice bruschetta out of this. Or I just make breadcrumbs out of a bread like this. <laughs> Number two, closer uh, attention to the fermentation process. You see it had nicer oven spring, um, even got a little bit of an ear. Both are at 80% hydration, but still I feel just from the consistency, it's not, it's not fluffy enough. I want the bread to be more fluffy. So um, I feel I could improve this recipe by probably another 10% or 20%, but I would still not get there exactly where I want to be because I always personally like this very uh, nice crust here in combination with the very fluffy in interior. And this got me thinking, I don't know how much gluten this flour contains, but I know that in many flours, for instance, when you buy strong bread flour, you typically just get an all-purpose flour with added gluten. So why not try exactly the same? Why not try adding additional gluten and then upgrading the hydration a little bit more? Because a higher hydration means your dough is more elastic and this way your dough can be more inflated. So now how much water should I be adding? I could do a test, but I figured I'm just going to try something because the base hydration that works with this flour is 80% and I'm just going to try 110% hydration because I've never done this and this is just an experiment and yeah I just wanted to see what happens when I do this how wet can I make my whole wheat dough and 110% hydration that's more water than flour and this is really incredible because normally when I just make an everyday sourdough I would be going for 65% hydration so this dough is going to be incredibly sticky incredibly hard to handle. But regardless, let's give this a shot. Let me show you how I try to bake an extremely wet and sticky dough.
I can't stress enough how important it is that your sourdough starter is very active. In this case, I fed my sourdough starter one to five to five. It's not too sour this way and it doubled in size. That's been taking me around five hours and now it's ready to be added to the dough. Just going to wet my hands a little bit and try to do the window pane effect. And are you seeing this? Huh? It won't stay together. So, <laughs> I think I'm just going to be adding a little tiny bit more gluten for this level of hydration. And I've been adding 50 grams and the start I'll be adding another 20 grams of gluten. Now it's time to be adding my sourdough starter. I will be adding 20%. That's... Uh, 100 grams. Salt has already been added. My starter <laughs> smells a little bit sour, but not too sour. So this is going to be, um, I feel, an excellent fermentation process. And now I'm just gonna stir everything together. Uh, with my hands, I'll let that sit again for 15 minutes. And then I will have another look at the dough, see whether it came together a little bit better this time. Et voila! I hope it's performing a little better now. Let's have a look. Oh yes, this is a nice looking gluten <laughs> network. Well done. Okay, I'm now going to take this dough, remove it a little bit from the edge of the container so that it's easier to take out. And then I will be taking it out and putting it here on the bench for some bench heating. Now you can do this without a bench scraper, but a bench scraper is definitely going to make things a little bit easier. And the goal here is just taking the dough, using the tension of the surface and folding the dough on top of each other. So you see how the dough is already coming together very well. With a dough scraper, it's pretty much the same process. You just go in here, pull it, fold it on top of itself. Now with a dough scraper, you can also do some magic like this. Take the dough, round it up, but also works just using your hands. One more time. You can do this for as long as you like. And um, this is going to add so much amazing strength. <laughs> and you can see the dough is very sticky. It also sticks to my hands. I'm going to stop working it, but it does not flow out that much anymore. So um, this dough works well for its hydration level. So yeah, good looking dough. And now I'm going to show you one little trick that I always like to do. I like to take a small jar and this jar is going to help me to control when the bulk fermentation is complete. And now I'm just going to extract a tiny piece. Now you're probably wondering how much this is. Well, this is just enough to fill the bottom of the jar. Um, I'm just going to spread this out here at the bottom of the jar, like this. And the moment this has doubled in size, um, my dough is ready for the next stage. This is a very, very, very good trick that I like to do, especially when working um, with new flowers or so, where I'm not so sure about the timings. Um, this is an excellent way to just monitor the fermentation progress. And this is what you want because um, you don't want to ferment for too little, but also for not too long. And I'm now just going to cover this with another jar so that it does not dry out. Place this to the side. It should be placed in the same environment as your uh, dough, of course, because, yeah, it should have the same temperature. All right, so just rounding this up one more time. Ah, 
I'm now going to let this rest for another 15 minutes and then I will be laminating. Round this up a little more and then back to the container. I'll see you again in 15 minutes. 15, <laughs> not 50, 15. The dough flattened out a bit, just what I expected. Let's have another look. Yep, it holds together much nicer than before. I'll remove it from the container again and place it on my bench. Now I already prepared another container. It's just a really basic glass bowl with a nice lid. And that's where I'll be putting my dough in for resting. But before I'm just going to be doing a little bit of lamination and I'll show you how that works. It's pretty much the same as bench kneading, just a little more advanced. You take out your dough, you flatten it out. And you can see how the dough is just trying to come back together. That's what the gluten is doing pretty much. And now all we are going to do is we're going to shape the bread together again. And that way the sticky side will uh, stick to itself. Let me try one thing. <laughs> I learned this in the Viennese. So good, do you see this? Nice pocket of air here. <laughs> I learned this when making Apfelstrudel in Vienna. This is what I like to do. So now take this and fold it over like this. Oh, here it's pulling apart a little bit. I stretched it a little too far. No problem at all. Just pulling everything here into the middle. And now what I like to do is a croissant style fold, a four fold, which is taking this side, putting this here, taking this side, putting it next to it, and then pulling all on top of each other. Good looking though. And now I'm just going to roll it on top of itself one more time. This is also a good practice this is something that you have to do later on during shaping and you can see it sticks more to my hands than normally but it feels like a nice dough i'm just going to round this up by dragging it over the surface of my counter so that i have a nice looking ball and just so you know have a look at how magically this is now staying together and holding its shape. This is going to be a great though. I have high hopes <laughs> for this experiment. So I'm now going to take it with my dough scraper and place it inside of this lid, instead of this uh, bowl, I'm sorry. Cover this up and then it's going to ferment. And now what I'll be doing is I will be applying hourly coil folds until this tiny jar here, which I marked, indicates that the dough doubled in size. It's been around an hour and let's do our first coil fold. I'm just carefully removing the dough here from the container with wetted hands. And now I can go here, lift the dough upwards, place it over, Fold it over like this, you see no stickiness. I'm rotating this. Now I'm doing the same thing from the other side. And what I like to do now is I like to take the dough from this side, do this one more time. And now I just take it and I let it sit like this. And this way the dough looks very nice from the side, like this. It's going to hold its uh, shape. I'm very amazed by this dough. <laughs> After all my recent failures with whole wheat, 
This finally seems to be a good though. So yeah, let's put this to rest and um, I'll be showing you again the final coil fold that I will be doing uh, before I shape this. The final coil fold will be around 30 minutes before I proceed with the final shaping. But until then, I'll not show it in the video. I'll be doing hourly coil folds. So the dough has definitely increased in size. Um, it's been around six hours now, and typically I only bulk ferment for six hours, but I feel this can just take a little bit longer. So I'm just going to let this ferment for another 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, I'm now going to do my last uh, coil fold. Let's have a look at how nice this dough is looking now. Very smooth, some nice signs of fermentation. And I can't fully really say, but I feel it almost doubled in size as well. So let's do the coil fold now. So that last coil fold is very critical because we don't want to be degassing our dough now. That would mean that all that work that we invested in our dough, well, it's not for nothing, but we wouldn't have that nice open crumb. So now you have to be really careful. For this, I recommend you to wet your hands with cold water. That makes it much easier to work with the dough. I'm just carefully removing the dough from the edges of the container, but it actually doesn't stick. So that's already a very good sign. So let me also wet this hand. Taking this, folding this over. Rotate. In this case, I folded it over twice because I feel that there was um, too much of a distance. It always depends a little bit on how far your dough is also floating out. And now the same thing again with the very gentle hands. I'm just rolling the dough on top of itself. See, already a sign that I did not do it um, so well. Let me just show you for science. I'm now drying my one hand and you see it already sticks way more. Okay, now it's already wet again. Just in comparison now here, no sticky situation at all. The right hand, you see how much it starts to stick. Okay, now the last side, just taking this over, placing this down and gently, very gently tucking down the dough like this. This is uh, looking very well, much better than I was expecting. Now I'm going to give this those 30 minutes, which I discussed, and then I can just flip over the dough. I'm not going to pre-shape because I want to have very, very big pockets of air. So 30 minutes and then let's shape it. So it's been around another 30 minutes and this dough is definitely looking good. Let's proceed and shape it now. Now, when you're shaping a dough like this, which is very wet and very sticky, it's important that you only do as few moves as possible. Every additional move could damage your dough structure. And we are going to be shaping this dough into a batard. This is a batard, and this is called a banneton. Now, this is made out of special wood. Um, you can just use also a regular bowl. It doesn't really matter that much. But what you wanna do is you either wanna have a linen inside by the way thank you somebody corrected me it's linen not linen so linen inside and uh, then we're going to dust this with some rice flour if you don't have a linen no problem you can also just use a kitchen towel but this rice flour really does the big difference it's going to absorb a lot of water and the dough is not going to stick to the baton at least that's what i hope it's always this critical moment before the bake where you see, okay, did I screw up or is everything going according to plan? I'm just going to get started by preparing the Benetton and a great hack that you can do is um, put the linen of your Benetton like this, a part like this, so, and now apply the rice flour and then you will have an even cover of rice flour. I'm just going to be putting this to the side for now. This can go away 
And now the scary part starts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my whole wheat flour and I'm going to be covering the surface. We used the tension of the surface before, but now this is the worst thing that could happen, that our dough is sticking to the surface. We would be losing all that excellent structure that we built. One more time, our dough, just look at how nicely it expanded. I'm now just going to take this and I will flip this over and hopefully it's going to come right out. If it does not, chances are that maybe you over fermented, your dough is a little bit too sticky or you did not create enough dough strength. But when you did everything right, it should just come out very easily, especially since I applied the last cold fold around 30 minutes ago. So let's take this as we say in German, Humor, Spannung, Umsatz, and let's shape it. And voila, it came right out. Maybe that's the additional gluten. Just going to carefully spread this. I don't want to degas or destroy any of the structure. Actually, now I'm going to be flouring my hands. Um, I think it's better than wetting. And now I will take this, fold this into the middle, and then I will fold this over and making the dough stick to itself. So this is the sticky side. This is also the sticky side at the bottom. There's no stickiness. So I'll try to take this and put this into the middle. And you could also be using your uh, dough scraper to do this. But I'm just going to be doing it with my hands today. So carefully into the middle. Tuck this down. Take this. And also tuck this down, okay? So now, because we floured our surface, I can easily rotate the dough. Just going to be putting some additional flour below. And now I will roll the dough up. I will pull this out and then roll the dough and push inside to create some additional tension. Pull out, pull here, pull out, stretch in, push in, I mean, and some more time. And this is pretty much our shaped dough. We can tuck the edges in a little bit just to make this look a little more beautiful. And now I can use the tension of the surface a little bit more just to tuck down the dough a little. I'm just also going to be showing you, I will also tuck this edge in here. The less flour you use at this stage, the easier that is. I'll be using some of that excess flour on this dough because it's so, normally I would not do this, but since dough, this dough is just so incredibly super sticky wet, uh, I better do that. And I can always brush off some of that excess flour before the bake, so. <laughs> but yeah, now always the tricky moment arrives where I have to take this and put this into the Benetton. With a quick movement, I'm not gonna try to do this with my bare hands because I feel it's stuck to the bottom of the table, which is totally okay. So I will remove it, flip it over, and then place it in the Benetton. Quick movement into the Benetton. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Much better than I expected. Looking very good. And now the final stage starts, uh, the final fermentation st stage, the proofing. And now for proofing, as always, I like to do the finger poke test where I'm just going to poke the dough 
and you can see how easily this springs back right now. Now, if this springs back very, very slowly, then this dough would be ready to be baked. But what I like to do is I like to take the dough just before and then I like to give it another eight hours rest in the fridge. You'll get a little bit more oven spring, but also in the end, it's much, much easier to uh, score a dough that is cold. So yeah, one more time, the finger poke test, just take your floured finger, put it inside and did you see how fast this sprung back? So um, this is not ready yet. I'm gonna uh, leave this at room temperature, in my case for around two hours or so. Um, and yeah, I'll just show you again a little bit later uh, when I'll put this into the fridge. It's been around an hour and let's check. You can see the dent is still recovering very fast. So this is not ready. I'm gonna have another look in 30 minutes. Okay, another 30 minutes passed and let's have another look. You see that dent springs back. But very slowly recovers. So there remains a little bit of a dent. One more time. I'm sure to you here as well. So um, this is what we're looking for. And it slowly recovers, but it still recovers. So it's not overproofed. And now is the time to take this and place this in the fridge overnight until I wake up in the morning, which is around probably uh, <laughs> not real German. Uh, that would be probably six hours, but uh, yeah, relaxed <laughs> German, eight to nine hours. And um, then I'll be preheating my oven directly in the morning and then it's going to be baked. Just one last side note. This is the tiny jar that I set up and now after proofing has finished, this is how it looks like. It doubled a little bit more, I would say. So just also as another reference value uh, for you. And you can see those really nice pockets of air here. So this is going to be a hopefully a very yummy bread. And good morning. I'm a very, very lazy German. <clears throat> I probably slept 10 hours. So it's been almost 11 hours now since I sh uh, put the bread into the fridge. All right, so I'm now just going to flip this over and hopefully this comes right out. Swift movement here. Ooh, yes, yes, please, 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 please. Ah, yes, no stickiness, great. One thing you can do, I have this extra brush and I just like to brush off some flour as well. <laughs> And now to the scoring part, again with a swift movement. And close. It's time to remove the steam. Oh. <laughs> Sorry for that. And look at our bread. Not that much of an ear, but that could also be because it's just so high in hydration, around 110%. So let's remove the source of steam and give this a nice crust. I'll remove this and I will also remove this tray. And it's been another 20 minutes and this is the bread. Let's let this cool down. Not that much of an ear as I expected. You can also see here, um, on this side, the, the pattern did not really uh, visualize that much, but I'm super excited to let this cool down and then have a look at the crap. I'm going to let this cool down for at least an hour. The bread cooled down and now let's have a look at the crumb. It feels quite soft from the outside, different to the other breads. Interesting. 
<laughs> it almost looks a little underbaked here, if you see that. But maybe that's just because um, of the high hydration. But if you <laughs> if you touch it, it's almost sticking to your hand. Uh, but I never had that much of an open crumb with just a plain uh, whole wheat bread. So now let's put this to the test and taste it. Mmm, a very hearty, nice fit. Boy. Nice taste. Very delicious. And I like the, the crispy crust here paired with the very, very wet inside. It's just this excellent play of different consistencies. Mm. I'm definitely, sorry, I'm definitely going to be baking this again. So very delicious. And let's have another final look at the breads. Number one, number two, number three. I'm already very happy with the development, um, especially the taste of this bread. I wish I could give you a slice because it's just so good. But I'm not there yet. I have to give this another shot. And please, if you have some feedback, some suggestions, what I should improve, uh, drop me a message in the comment section. I would very much appreciate that. I'm going to be trying to bake this recipe again, uh, spend some closer attention to the fermentation process because I feel it was my lazy germaness this morning uh, that made it ferment for a little bit too long in the fridge. Or maybe I also accidentally adjusted the temperature from the fridge because I had just returned from vacation. Just a small change can screw up the fermentation uh, process. And fermentation is really the key and I can't stress that enough. So yeah, I'll be giving that another shot because I really feel that I'm onto something. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. It's definitely been a lot of fun. And may the gluten be with you. Happy baking and talk to you soon. Bye.